Honestly, I just finished recording this episode and I was just playing a video game. Unbeknownst to me, I was learning cool stuff about thermodynamics. Stuff I never even thought about. Turns out, you can learn some pretty cool new things from video games. Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be working on the hydrogen bubbler once again. Now, we're, this time, we're going to be testing the flow of the hydrogen within the current radiator system right now. Now, currently, I have only been working with one flow, which is the coldest at the bottom and the hottest at the top. We're going to go ahead and try a couple of different things here, putting the coldest at the top, and then, you know, it warms up as it goes down to the bottom. And then we're going to compare that uh, not only to how much it's outputting, but to how much power it's consuming. So that's going to be a new dynamic to this test, and that is how much power does it take to purify contaminated oxygen into clean oxygen. So let's get to it. Now this is one of those topics that you guys have actually talked about quite a bit here in the comment section below. So SF is talking about a counterflow setup being the coldest at the top, saying that this is probably going to be the most efficient 90% of the time. At least that's what he's saying right there. But maybe a parallel flow system? We feed the cold hydrogen at the top of the radiator and now put it at the bottom. Maybe that'll work. Adam is also talking about the same thing here. Glenn as well. See, <laughs> this pops up many times. And uh, Andrew as well. So there's several, like I, so like I was saying, this has popped up several times in the comment section. So what do I think is gonna happen? You know, before we get into this test. I think, I think introducing the coldest at the top is actually going to work better than having the coldest at the bottom. For one main reason, you can see it right here. This has gotten so cold at this one point here that it has now created enough solid oxygen to where it's stuck here. It's not actually flowing into the pump. So that limits actually how cold I can run this system. If I put the hotter stuff near the top, I might be able to make the entire system a little bit colder and avoid building up solids at the bottom. And that's the idea. So that's why I think it might work out better. All right, so the other thing I've done here is reworked the power system. There's still plenty of mess available, but I got rid of all these batteries down here. The thing is, when you get too many batteries, you start messing up your reports. The other thing you guys were also mentioning many, many times down there below was that I could use this cheat engine program, which I normally just use to speed up the game to freeze a battery in a current power state. Now, I was able to figure that out. However, that breaks the report, so I'm not gonna be able to use that. So I have a duplicate. It's gonna be running on his little uh, wheel here, Joshua, and I'll be able to hopefully just read those reports. So to give you an idea of where we're at, this is the obsidian radiator over here. So it's the less sort of productive one. It doesn't have uh, as high of a thermal conductivity as the granite did. So it only produces about 90 or so kilograms of oxygen. It uses 56 kilojoules of energy in a single day, so that's 56,000 joules. So when you take that and convert it to watts, as far as an average wattage, you get 93.3. So that's not peak watts, it's just averaged throughout the entire day right there. So our two important numbers right here is how many joules or watts it takes per kilogram of oxygen to purify. So it takes 626 joules to purify one kilogram of polluted oxygen into oxygen or 1.04 watts. So this will be our benchmark. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this back to granite, do a couple of energy runs, figure out how that changes things. All right, so I went ahead and ran a power test just to make sure that my numbers were nice and accurate. So this is the obsidian radiator over here. And over five cycles, the average usage was 118.8 kilojoules right there. So that's that number right there. The average watts, if you average it out, not peak watts, because some things turn on and other things turn off, is 198. So that's about half of what you get off of your hamster wheel right there. So the amount of joules it takes to clean one kilogram of polluted oxygen into clean oxygen is 1,328 joules, or 2.21 watts per kilogram of oxygen. Another interesting way to look at this might be per duplicate. So if you consider that a duplicate uses about 60 kilograms of oxygen in a day, even though that number goes up and down depending on like whatever's going on with that duplicate, it's usually lower, but let's say 60 is maximum because 100 grams a second times 600 seconds is 60 kilograms. So if you figure that out, it's 132.86 watts per duplicate. All right, so here's an interesting result. After five days, it averaged out to 102 kilojoules right there. There's actually a little bit more variance in the granite pipes. However, that means it takes less energy than the obsidian pipes. And we also know that it converts more oxygen. 
So what this comes out to is 991 joules or an average of 1.65 watts per kilogram of oxygen, which is quite a bit less than the obsidian pipes. So there's a reason to go with the efficient material, which opens up a lot of questions about adding more tiles to this to increase its thermal conductivity, maybe try to find a way to get liquid pipes, maybe a rain down system, or what we're gonna test now, running the system backwards where the coldest is at the top and the hottest should be at the bottom. So just so you know, I'm gonna compare everything to this baseline right here. So this is the system that we have you know, and every change after this, we're gonna compare back to this to see if it's making a positive change or a negative change to our efficiency or the production levels or whatever we wanna figure out. So once we've figured out all these different experiments, we can then repackage it into a nice system where we have all the nice benefits and it becomes a pretty sweet blueprint that you can use in your base. Let's go ahead and make our first change. Okay, so to make this change, it's quite easy. I'm just gonna put a bridge right here and making sure I have the right material, because that's really important. Take this and bring it over here like that. So the return will be up this way. And the outfeed will be over here. So I gotta I gotta change this one too. Okay, I deconstructed the pipe over here. So if we bring this, it should go down now. And this one should go over here. So that's the path. Cold hydrogen comes in here, hot er hydrogen exits up there. So as it works to refigure out its flow, let's see what happens here. Yeah, there we go. It looks like I'm gonna have to pump in a little bit more hydrogen. All right, so if we take a look at the contents here, you'll see that it starts off around negative 200 and then it's quickly heating up because the pipe itself is still quite warm. So it's starting to cool down. And down at the bottom, the hydrogen is still very cold. It's gonna take a little while for this to balance out. I'm gonna go ahead and give it like 10 cycles just to balance out. Isn't that the way we cycle this enough times to where it's gonna have a real good number? All right, so I've been watching this number right here that I have my mouse hovering over, and I've noticed that the number has not continued to drop. It's just gone and become very, very stable. So that makes me think that this whole system is really quite stable right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my test here on cycle 198. Okay, 198 messed up. How about 199? <laughs> Technical difficulties. I blew up one of these tiles and that's what's up. All right, I'll start on 200. Jeez, keep messing up here. 200, let's paint this dry. Yeah, there we go. All right, so first day was 99.8. That's a little bit lower than what we were getting out of the previous, you know, setup. Not much. We'll see what the next few days bring. All right, so here's the results for the cold top radiator test right here. It produced just a little bit less oxygen with an average of 100.4 as compared to 102.86. So a little bit less, but not much. The amount of energy it used was an increase of 1.6 kilojoules right there. So if we look at watts per kilogram right there, it's up to 1.72 as compared to 1.65. So take a little bit more energy. Here's what I noticed though, that I think is really, really gonna be beneficial here. If we take a look at these temperature of the pipes, this one up here hovers right around 70 degrees Celsius. Down here at the bottom where I was pre, where I, previously I was starting to get a few solids every once in a while, they'd melt and then they'd come back down. But there was a, an occasional problem. This sits at negative 214 degrees, which is close, but there's still a few degrees to go before that starts before that oxygen starts turning into a solid. So I think, potentially, what I can do is turn this thermal switch down a little bit more than what I can do with the other arrangement. So let's go ahead and test that out. So right now this is 208. If I take this down to 213 degrees, that's gonna start cooling everything here. I'm gonna keep turning this down until I run into a problem where stuff is turning into solids down here. At that point, I'll then reverse it and, you know, do what I need to do there. Looks like I'm still in good shape. Some of these gas pipes are colder than the other. This one here, for some odd reason, is negative 215, but the one next to it is negative 201. It's just that one bend, for some odd reason, that is really cold. Looks like I can still make this a little bit colder, so let's go ahead and drop it down. Negative 218. We're still not blowing up any pipes, so that's good. It's cold down here, but nothing's turned in, into a solid. It's actually working out. 
and the temperature that's coming out of this thermoregulator is still quite good. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it even more. Negative 223 degrees Celsius now. Charging a system to a lower temperature sure does suck up a lot of power. These guys are having a hard time keeping up. Looks like I can still go further. How about that? It's now coming out of that thermoregulator at negative 240 degrees Celsius. 252, that's the number you gotta watch out for. Now what's surprising to me is that even though this gas pipes down here, negative 236 degrees, it's not, nothing's turning into a solid. I'm not having any problems with that. All right, clearly I have not reached the limit yet. Let me go ahead and drop it yet another degree. One thing that might be worthwhile is making this chamber up here larger for this pump. I notice that sometimes it's not really pumping the maximum amount it could be pumping. So that might be an efficiency gain right there. I somehow have super frozen liquid oxygen. Look at that. Liquid oxygen, oxygen is at negative 240 degrees Celsius, but it's not a frozen solid. Is it because it never comes to rest? Is that what's going on here? How is this working? What magic have I have I encountered? <laughs> well, clearly, it could still get colder. Oh gosh, this is so close. 251 degrees? This is gonna freeze. No! Look at that. 252, 252. <laughs> That's as close as you can get. I'm within 0.2 of a degree of freezing these pipes right here. So I don't know if you want to run it this low. All right, so here's what I'm seeing as far as this oxygen is that it's continuously flowing. So it's really not be ever becoming too cold that it turns into a solid. Like some of these tiles right here in the corner, they're showing some numbers. Now it's still negative 200 degrees Celsius. Whatever's going on in this corner for whatever reason, it isn't turning into a solid, even though it's negative 251 degrees. So I don't know what's going on over here. All the flow is happening on the left, which makes me think cascading this down to the left might be a better idea because some stuff is not happening over on this side. So there may be a better shape for this. Turning this all the way down to 238 degrees. Like it seems like it takes a whole lot more energy all of a sudden. <laughs> Surprisingly though, it's not blowing up the pipes, even though it's <laughs> it's within 0.1 of a degree. <laughs> it is that close. All right, so two more cycles, and then I'm going to run this test. See what kind of numbers we get. So right off the bat, there's two things I'm seeing. Now that I'm down to temperature, it doesn't look like it's taking as much energy. It looks like it only takes about one duplicate to keep the energy up. I think I'm also seeing a much higher rate as far as the amount of oxygen being purified, which you would expect because the system's colder. Yeah, I'm well over 100 already. Boom, 150.6. Nice. All right, so here's some interesting numbers right here. By getting that temperature down there within 0.1 degree of turning into a liquid and freezing those pipes and causing a lot of problems right there, it was able to increase the production of oxygen by quite a bit, up to 148, let's just call it 149 kilograms right there. I've added a number over here, which is oxygen per duplicate. So that's how much oxygen is being produced divided by 60 kilograms a day right there, which is how much an oxygen would breathe until I do further testing to figure out what that average number actually is. So 60 kilograms right there, that is enough for two and a half duplicates per day right there. So the problem with this is the amount of watts per oxygen has gone up. So we're now up to 2.07 as compared to previously where we're at at 1.65. I can see some interesting numbers and graphs coming on here. All right, let's go ahead and do one last test here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same temperature. However, I'm going to flip that orientation back over so that the cold is at the bottom. We'll see what happens. The temperature that's going into these pipes shouldn't be a problem because I think it's going to be about the same numbers. However, it seemed like it was more efficient. So we might get an efficiency gain. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I probably should have saved this game right before I click that button. All right, so here's the thing I want to keep my eye on. This gas pipe right here is at negative 73.8 degrees Celsius. So as this arrangement flips around over the next couple of days i want to see if that number gets quite a bit warmer here's the other thing i'm going to change this setup so it's a little bit taller that makes it easier to count 
So while that's doing its number, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. There we go. That'll save me from having to do math each time. So look at how cold this gas pipe is down here at the bottom. Negative 251.9. Like, that's super cold! It's right on the limit! I think the right place to bring this in is right over here. I mean, this seems to be where all the liquid is flowing from. So, I could probably rearrange this and make it a little bit better. Alright, so interestingly enough, it doesn't look like that temperature is really changing much at all. I mean, it kind of goes up and down, but it's really not changing. I'm just thinking, like, when's the last time you booted up a game and thought, I'm gonna look into thermodynamics and then have it be incredibly interesting. I mean, as Saf Aaron here was saying, this game is to thermodynamics what KSP is to physics. It's incredible. And I completely agree with you. <laughs> this is insane. All right, Asaf. You obviously know some stuff I don't know here. Your radiator is a counterflow setup. The coldest hydrogen is at the bottom. Hottest meets hottest. This is actually more efficient, right? We're gonna we're gonna prove this out real quick here, but maybe. All right, Asaf, you called it. You're the only comment I read that called it that that having the hottest at the top and then the coldest at the bottom was gonna be more efficient. Let's see what the results are. Look at this. So here's the results that we got here. This is with the coldest hydrogen at the bottom, the hottest hydrogen at the top. Again, the hottest polluted gas at the top, coldest polluted gas at the bottom. Nothing froze up. It continued to work just fine. The amount of oxygen that was produced on average is 145.2, slightly less than what was produced in the other setup. However, the amount of kilojoules that were used were a fair bit less resulting in watts per oxygen being at 1.92 as compared to 2.07. Therefore meaning it was more efficient. What is that in average watts? Well, we were talking about 308.9 as compared to 278.6. So, I didn't think it would be this way. I thought things would freeze up. I thought all this other stuff was gonna happen, but it turns out, nope. It was right to begin with. Have the coldest at the bottom, the hottest at the top, and that's more efficient. And you can see it right here. What an interesting result. All right, so here's the other point we might have to start looking into, is the delta, or the difference here between the polluted oxygen and what these pipes are. Because it seems like the further those are apart from each other. Who died? How'd you die? What? Marie, you're messing it up, you're starvation. Oh wow, you, you guys ate a lot. My bad, my bad Marie. I'm sorry. Many duplicates have died in the making of this video. 26 to be exact. Luckily Meep, you don't need another duplicate because you can produce enough power to, you know, keep this whole thing going. There you go. Because remember, an average duplicate can produce 196.4 kilojoules in a day. Considering this takes less than that, should be able to keep it running all day long and through the night of course from the looks of it struggling meep come on you 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 you're letting me down all right interesting it seems like we can't keep up with the peak wattage so now that meep's behind i'm not sure he's gonna be able to catch up more interesting results over here hmm that's interesting all right so where was i i was talking about the difference between the temperature of the polluted oxygen as compared to the temperature of the hydrogen, which I think makes a great topic for the next test we're going to do here. Pre-cooling the polluted oxygen and seeing, you know, just how much that affects the efficiency. Yes. Yes, interesting stuff. All right, cool. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys have found this uh, episode somewhat informative or enjoyable. Let me know down there in the comment section below. You guys have been doing absolutely awesome so far. Thank you guys for all the support. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. I look forward to the next episode, and hopefully I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brotgar out. Boom! This recording only took two hours and 20 minutes. That's like a new record for me. I don't know what I'm going to do with all my time.